One Hundred Foot Robot Golf is a game developed by No Goblin in 2016 for the PS4. If you've been following me for a while, you may recognize it as my favorite game of PAX East 2016. I had a blast playing the split-screen multiplayer in this absolutely ridiculous game where you use Gundam-style robots to destroy a city while playing golf. It absolutely makes no sense, but it was a blast to play. But now that the full game is out, I think it's time I take a critical eye to the fully released product. So let's find out what I thought in my mighty review of... 100 Foot Robot Go! Let's start out with the story. It must be hysterical seeing as how they rationalize using Gundam style robots to play a casual game of golf while destroying cities, right? Well, yes and no. 100 Foot Robot Golf definitely has its fair share of funny moments. From the location on the map where the announcer tells jokes, to the fact that you can play as a Voltron parody piloted by five corgis, this game definitely has the right sense of humor going for it. But with that being said, a lot of the comedy in this game tends to fall completely flat. The story is kind of all over the place, but this is what I gathered during my playthrough. In this world, giant robots are used to play the most honorable of all sports, 100 foot robot golf. Prior to the events of the story, a tournament being held on the moon had issues and a massive explosion destroyed a large portion of the moon and killed a popular robot golfer. Now one of the golfers responsible for the tournament, Max, under the orders of his boss, Vani, must recruit the other golfers to compete in another tournament both to redeem themselves and bring the sport of robot golf back to its former glory. And while this premise should be hysterical, it's bogged down by numerous issues that reveal themselves immediately upon starting the game. Starting with the writing, all the characters are written like cliches, and while I understand the plot is meant to be a parody of Gundam-style anime shows, they never really do anything interesting with it in terms of the story. There are a couple chuckle-worthy moments here and there, but due to issues with the slow pacing and sometimes awkward humor, the story just doesn't live up to the expectations set by its premise. And then there's the voice acting. It is, without a doubt, the worst voice acting I have ever heard in my life. Accents go all over the place, inflections are almost inhuman, and it sounds like the actors are just reading their lines from a script without putting any kind of emotion into them. I've heard that this is supposed to be a parody of bad anime dubbing, but I've never heard anything with a dub this bad, even in localized anime. As if that wasn't enough, it sounds like they couldn't even get a decent microphone to record the vocals as pee popping and leveling problems are rampant throughout the entire campaign. If you don't believe me, listen to this. What? What do you remember? Nothing. I lost my memory. And my arm. And my leg. Oh, that, that's great. I, uh, I'm, I'm so happy to hear you made it out unscathed. Unscathed? I have robot limps because of what happened. Hmm. Well, I must say, it's very surprising to see Liquid Steel representing NGBL on the T and not the famed Project C. Especially after they won the NGBL Invitational. Any ideas what tipped Penzato and Dando over the edge in your favor? Huh. I don't know. I guess they just felt like our human brains and natural greatness were a better fit for the unique play surface of the moon. It's a shame, too. With decent voice acting, the story may have been a lot more interesting. Visually, the game does improve a bit. During cutscenes, the artwork is fantastic, and I really like each character's design. The different robot types and their color palettes are also usually cool. That being said, it's not perfect. The cutscenes choose to use a half-animated style, with the characters changing facial expressions every once in a while to speak, and fading to different positions to indicate movement. This isn't terrible per se, but I couldn't help but think the game would be much better off with a full animation budget, or just sticking with static images. Still, things get a lot better once you're out on the course. The golf courses are varied, with four themes and nine holes each, which isn't bad for a downloadable game. The 3D modeling is simplistic, but it works in this type of game and makes everything easier to see and understand while playing. I never experienced a frame rate issue or any loading screen lasting much longer than it should, and the sound effects while playing were usually nice to listen to as well. The best thing about this game presentation-wise, though, are the commentators. I'm just gonna interrupt the action real quick here to remind everyone that we destroyed the moon. Hey now, you're a golf star. On the fairway, go play. 
They are legitimately funny, making references to the in-game absurdity in pop culture with deadpan delivery, and they're actually voice acted really well, sounding just like the calm, quiet commentators usually heard in a real golf game. And the music, while rare, is really good and obviously heavily inspired by Dragon Ball, which you won't hear me complaining about anytime soon. There are quite a few modes as well. There's of course free play mode in which players can duke it out online or in local split screen multiplayer, though I don't think you'll be playing online anytime soon, the local multiplayer is fun with a friend or two. In these games, the players choose their characters and rules for the game. It's just a shame you have to select a pre-made robot, loadout, and control scheme. It would have been cool to customize their weapon loadout and make something that suits our needs specifically. Speaking of which, players can also unlock customization options by playing through the campaign. They're just cosmetic, but it's a nice touch. There are also Hole of Fame challenges in which players can compete for the top spot in fastest speed and fewest strokes on each hole, as well as being able to play a marathon of all 36 holes in the game. Though for some reason, they decided to only put the person with the best score up, but not the rest of the leaderboard. What's the point of having a spot in the ranks if you can't see how well you need to do to move up? As far as the campaign goes, you'll hop from mission to mission going through the story two to three holes at a time until finally reaching the conclusion. Depending on their performance, the player can earn bronze, silver, and gold medals which can be spent at the shops for more skin upgrades. The whole thing will take about three to four hours to play through, but the challenges and variety are pretty fun, even if the presentation is lacking. Okay, so the presentation's kind of a mixed bag. How's the gameplay? Pretty much the same. Let's start out with the rules. It's golf. You use a club to hit the ball into the hole. The difference here is that unlike in real golf, the robots play the game simultaneously. This allows for players to get in the way of the ball to block another player's shot and just generally be dicks to one another. Also, because you're in these giant mechs, if something like a building gets in your way, you can use your club or your onboard weapons to get rid of it. The goal of the game differs based on the chosen rules, but it's usually either to be the first into the hole, or to get in the hole in the least number of strokes. I love this take on golf, and it adds a freshness to the sport that I haven't seen since the last Mario Golf game. Plus, to add even more variety, there are also multiple ways to hit the ball. From the classic power gauge, to synchronized swings, to swing calculations for accuracy. Some are better than others for sure, but they're all interesting to play and add to the replayability. The only issue here is that the game doesn't give much of an explanation into how each of these control schemes works. I have no clue how to get full synchronization on my pilot team, or how to actually putt with the math controls. Having a bunch of stuff in the HUD doesn't matter much when the game doesn't give any context to the player. On top of that, the game has massive problems with pacing. The ball moves incredibly slow, and even slower than that is your robot. It would have been way more fun to be blasting through cities at high speeds causing mass chaos and destruction on the way to the ball, but instead you kinda just awkwardly hobble over or gently float to the ball. Because of this, it feels less like playing golf with giant robots and more like playing golf with remote controlled robot toys. However, the biggest issue with the gameplay has to be the massive amount of glitches and poor design choices in place here. The ball doesn't always follow the trajectory shown, the terrain isn't always consistent in its friction, the ball will get stuck inside walls and in places where it can't be taken out, and sometimes the ball teleports back to the beginning of a hole instead of just back one stroke after going out of bounds. It's not the existence of these glitches that bothers me, but rather the sheer frequency with which they occur. It's really disappointing and drags down what should have been an amazing golfing game. Overall, I really like 100 Foot Robot Golf. It's crazy and bombastic and fun and it's full of charm and personality for a little while, but I can't turn a blind eye to all its faults. It's a buggy, glitchy mess, and it's got terrible voice acting, bad animation, and it's just awkwardly designed. And that's why with a heavy heart, I'm giving 100 Foot Robot Golf for the PS4 6 Arnold Palmers out of 10. It's not the accurate golf simulator that some of you might be looking for, but if you're looking for something to tide you over until the next Mario Golf comes out, you might have some fun here, and it is still really fun to play with your friends just hanging out on the couch. But I also want to remind you all, on my scale, a 5 out of 10 is an average game, so I do consider this to be above average but I can't consider it to be any better than that with its faults. 
But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this review. If you did, be sure to comment below and let me know what I should review next, and subscribe to see more game reviews and next week's Nifty Recipe based on this game. And as always, have a mighty nifty day today.